I don't know about this, Greg. I feel like we took a wrong turn somewhere. Uh, are you bringing me back here to kill me? Hmm. Uh, we are lost. So, came out here to talk a little bit about how do we get internet to the parts of the world that don't have internet yet. Um, the internet has changed so much about our lives, but there are places, like you can imagine, this desolate stretch of woods, miles from anywhere, where the internet hasn't yet penetrated. Um, and there's whole countries that are kind of the medical equivalent metaphorical equivalent of that coverage zone where you can never get a cell signal. Um, why is that? So in a lot of cases, uh, you know, there's this direct connection between internet and infrastructure. We've seen how the internet runs along old highway lines. We've seen how the internet, internet access in this country leverages existing connections that we built for cable, for the phone, uh, for other types of systems. And so if you're somewhere on Earth that doesn't have these previous infra this, this previous infrastructure, it can be very difficult to get the internet out there. Uh, how do I get the internet somewhere where there's not even electricity? All of the things, all these computers that power the internet, the computers that power the wired internet, those computers need power. And so if I can't even get power out to those places, it's going to be very, very difficult uh, to get the internet out there as well. Um, but this is a huge challenge for us going forward because at this, at, at, at this point in history, we've connected about 40% of the world's population to the internet. So maybe about 50%. And those numbers vary hugely depending on where you go. 50, the number in the United States, for example, in North America is much higher than 50%, whereas if you go to Africa, the number is much lower. And so one of the most exciting things that's going to happen with the internet over the next 50 to 100 years is we're going to bring a lot more people online. And those new people that are coming online are actually probably quite a bit different, have different needs, uh, maybe build, want to build different things, do different things with the internet than the people that are already here. And so that's tremendously interesting and exciting. But the problem is, how are we going to do it? Uh, there are, you know, some really interesting efforts out there uh, to bring the internet to people in, in, in new ways. So, for example, can I get the internet beamed down to me from a balloon that's hanging overhead? Um, can I get the internet down to me, beamed down to me from some, some sort of autonomous drone or autonomous plane that is circling overhead using a very small amount of power? Um, Obviously, these internet connections aren't going to be anywhere close to as fast as you would get even from your DSL cable modem with the lowest price plan. But there's something. They're starting to connect people and maybe even a little bit of internet is better than no internet at all. In fact, I think it probably is. But for the foreseeable future, we're certainly going to live in a world where as we bring more people online, a lot of those people that are going to be new to the internet are not going to have the types of connections that we're used to in this country and in other developed countries. And so they may not be able to have some of the same experiences. But I think moving forward for the next 100, 200, 500 years, you know, bringing the entire globe onto this incredible worldwide computer network that we've built is probably one of the most exciting things that's going to happen to the internet. And it's really going to transform the world around us in a lot of new ways.